Hey everyone, so in this video we are going to run through just how to add some player interaction to what we've already built in the previous ones. So at the minute the door very much just works on uh, an overlap, which is a form of player interaction, but it's not necessarily where we want it to be. So I was just working in the previous project, level seven. Um, so if I hit play, oh, sorry, I've actually deleted some stuff from a previous lesson. So let's quickly jump in here, clean it up. So that's where I previously had a sliding door in place. So if we hit play and we run over now. Our door works fine and opens, but it isn't prompting the player to do anything. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add like a little bit of player interaction. So I've got this uh, scripted inside the level blueprint for now, um, but we'll do another version after this where we can set it up inside its own blueprint actor, similar to what we've done in the slide door tutorial. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna set up an input because I don't have anything bound at the minute um, to tell the player that they can interact with objects. So if we go to edit, project settings, mine's just appeared on a different screen here. So down to input, now what we want is an action mapping. Um, so I've already set one up here, so I will get rid of it and I'll do it again from scratch. So we hit the plus here. It's called interact. And then underneath it, same as what we did in previous lessons, we need to tell it what we want. So I'm gonna use the E key, it's quite standard, first person games. And then I'm gonna add another one underneath that. I'm gonna set it up for gamepad. And I know that I'm already using the bottom button being A on an Xbox, X on a PS4. So I'm probably gonna use the right one. So gamepad, face button, right? And then we can close that. So what I wanna do now is have a look at this. So we wanna call this interact that we just set up. First of all, we're just gonna see if it works. So we should get a little hello on screen if it's working. There we go. So we know that's working fine. So what I kind of want to do is I want to leave like as much of this in place as I can. I don't want to really use the automatic door closing anymore. Um, so I'm going to get rid of that. But what I do want to do is set this up in a way that when we press E, I don't want the door to open. I only want the door to open if I'm close enough to it. Um, so the, this is one of the ways that we can do this. There's loads of different ways that we can actually end up setting this up. I'm gonna set it up with a real basic way, which is using a thing called a gate. So on interact, I wanna drag off here, I wanna ask for a gate. So it's under flow control. So at the minute, interact is gonna let me enter the gate. Um, so we can have stuff that opens, closes, toggles the gate. You can see this starts closed at the minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook this up to my timeline and then I'm going to remove that and put there. So I'm going to leave in a print string here just so you guys can see that I'm button pressing. I'm just going to have it say button pressed. And then if we pop into the game So we can see now the button press is working, but that gate is starting closed. So basically what it means is when I'm pressing the button, it's getting as far as the gate, but the, the gate is essentially locked. Now if I was to toggle this off and hit play, you can see I can open the door from the whole way back here, which is not necessarily what we want. Um, so we need to wire it up a little bit better. So I'm gonna start with the gate closed again. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna say that whenever we step into the trigger box, that's actually gonna open the gate. So whenever we step in, it's gonna open the gate. So if we're in the box and we press E, it's gonna, the gate's gonna be open and it's gonna let us enter it. If we exit the box, we're gonna close it. So what that means now when we have play is I can press E, button press is still getting red, that's fine. But until I walk into this box and press E, it'll never open. Okay. Now you notice I can't close the door. So that's the next thing that we need to try to figure out how to pet them. So 
So, so this gate is working fine, it's playing through, but we want something to play the reverse of the gate. Um, so there's a couple of different ways we could do this. One way that's quite handy is we could add a boolean to this door. Now I am doing this on a level blueprint, so this is better if you do it in its own blueprint actor, but let's add a boolean to begin with. Um, and we'll call it door open. And we'll hit compile. So remember door open is false. So it's always going to be false um, to start off with the game because it starts shut. So what we kind of want to do here is like, we want to do like a quick check. So if we step in the box and we press E, we want to check, is the door open? So we get this and we'll do a, a branch there. So if, so basically if that's true, we want to close it. Okay, so we'll run through here. So we'll hit play that in reverse. If it's false, we want to play it. So remember, this should always be false to begin with. So let's give it a try. Roll up the door, press E, opens, okay. Now, we can't get that call because we're never setting this now. So we're never saying, by the way, you know, as soon as this is as soon as this is done, let us let us do the opposite thing. So a good way of doing that is unfinished, we can then set this. So we can get this, we can set it. So whenever it finishes the timeline, we kind of want to say the door is now open. So then next time we come into the box and we get as far as the gate and we press E. It's going to get here and it's going to go oh crap this door is actually open what do you want me to do i'm going to say play the timeline in reverse meaning close the door so we'll give that a try now run update press e so you'll notice now the only problem is we're not getting it to be set back to the original again So we can add this on here if we need. Um, it's gonna look a little bit messy, but I'll show you how to do it. So if we get this and we do an F. So when it's finished, it's gonna check, is it open? So if that's true, we wanna set it to be false. And if it's false, we want to set it to true. So basically what we're doing here is we're toggling it. So whenever that timeline finishes, if we've just opened the door, if we've approached the door and you know it's closed, it's gonna play through the timeline. Whenever it's finished, it's gonna say, was that Boolean open or closed? And then it's gonna set it to be the opposite. And there we go. So it starts looking a little bit complicated, but really when we break it down into simple bits, there's not a lot of stuff that's kind of going on here. Um, so the next, obviously we could get rid of that because we don't really need it anymore. The next thing that we could kind of iterate on here is in the next video, we're gonna look at how, how we can add keys to this function. Um, so how we could take this door as it is set up at the minute and start adding in some keys. Then we can scale that up and we can add in multiple keys to open the door and then we can figure out how we can spawn keys based on something that's happening inside our game.